Hey guys, my name is Ismos, and today I want to show you some animation tips in Blender. And uh, yeah, so this is a tip to smoothen your animations or how to make smooth animations. So I have this plane uh, that I want to animate from right to, right to left, but I want to make it look a bit smooth. So I'm just going to turn on keyframe recording and uh, move it from this position. And then maybe at frame 80, I want it to move uh, about here. Let me also end uh, the timeline to uh, around 80 frames uh, so that we can uh, preview this really fast and see what we have. Maybe it's also not fast enough. So I'm just going to bring this closer in so that the animation is a bit fast. And see, it looks a bit jagged. Uh, the animation looks a bit jagged. And uh, uh, if you look closely, you might even start to see some kind of stutter in the animation so uh, the the first tip to make your animation smooth is uh, changing your frame rate to a higher frame rate for example to 60 frames per second and you can see how much difference uh, that gives you and uh, let me just slow it down by separating the keyframes a bit so this is 60 60 frames per second and this is 30 frame per second, you can see how that looks, or the difference between that. This is way smooth, and uh, this 30 frames per second is not that smooth. Uh, so another tip is that uh, in is in the uh, curves editor. So for example, if you hold on control tab, you can tab between, you can switch between or toggle between uh, the timeline and the curve editor or graph editor. and. Uh, now we are animating the y value, so we are moving it from this side and to this side to this side on the y value. So I want to work on only uh, the y location value. So we, if you expand uh, your transformation options or keyframes, uh, you can see uh, all the keyframes that have been animated. And uh, this is only available if you have the object selected. So if you don't have it selected, they will disappear. Just make sure you have it selected uh, to be able to see uh, these keyframes and now I only want to work on the Z on the X sorry on the Y location keyframe which is indicated by this green uh, curve and uh, to do that I can select that here and uh, so that is highlighted in orange and I can hit shift H to hide everything but that uh, curve and I can also use A uh, to select or alt A to deselect uh, these control points and uh, hit a uh, period key to zoom in on that keyframe you can see the kind of interpolation we have all the kind of uh, curves we have so so on your left from left light to right you have your uh, frames or your seconds and then from uh, bottom to top or on your Z axis I or Y axis you have your values so uh, as this indicates here this curve indicates it shows you that uh, the animation starts a bit slower and then speeds up and slows uh, like it's yeah, like you see in the animation here but uh, if you want to make it uh, linear or be more have a constant velocity uh, with no acceleration or deceleration just hit v to change the interpolation uh, to linear so if you hit v on your keyboard you can change between different uh, keyframe handles and uh, if you select vector it will give you a linear uh, kind of interpolation where you have a constant speed uh, in your animation. Uh, you may not want this, uh, say for example, you might want it to be, uh, to start off with a constant velocity, uh, but then you want it to slow down at the top. At the end here, you can just, uh, this control, if you select any of these points, uh, they have different handles. So if you select this, you can slow it down. So at the beginning here, it has a very, a sharp or constant velocity and then start slow starts to slow down and if you want it to slow down even further you can just drag this a bit faster a bit uh, first I would say this is uh, the values are uh, the values on this uh, axis on the y axis are uh, the properties and uh, the values on this lower axis which is these here are the frames or the time and I can switch between frames and time frames and time or seconds uh, by going and I think under view and uh, check uh, view frames or view seconds show seconds you can also use the shortcut control T I can see so uh, I don't know if I can let me expand this 
so I can try explaining this further uh, so here it is taking let's see about 40 seconds to move a value of uh, negative from negative 5 uh, to negative 4 and from this point onwards is taking uh, let's see about five seconds I think about five seconds to move just this much unfortunately I don't have my pen tool anymore but uh, uh, what I mean here is that uh, it is taking a lot of time no it's, uh, it's taking a shorter time frame to travel this distance while it's taking a lot of time to travel uh, this to travel this much distance uh, as I was trying to tell you that the scale here is that uh, on this axis you have uh, seconds so it is taking this much time from here to here to travel this distance which means it's really really slow uh, compared taking this time nearly the same time to travel uh, to travel this much distance as these are the properties or the values are uh, that uh, we are traveling uh, so uh, I wanted to show you that uh, just to get you to understand especially if you are new to blender to, or to blender animation to understand how this animation works so by moving this line closer to the to this at, by making this more flat at the top here you're slowing down the animation uh, by making it more uh, linear like this or if we bend it like this it means that uh, it's taking a shorter let's see by making it flat it just makes the speed constant I, I hope you, you did some uh, is it geometry I don't know where you learn about curves and what but uh, that's the same knowledge we are trying to apply here so if you're trying to slow it down you just make it something like that and if if you want this to be a bit uh, to start off really fast and then slow down you just do that you can see so I think these tips are very can be very very useful in your animation and that uh, maybe let me take a, a few seconds to explain this uh, just one more time so uh, the reason why it's speeding up uh, around here and then slowing down here uh, is speeding out around, let me make sure this is recording yeah the reason why it is speeding up here but not here as you can see is that on our time frame uh, you can see that uh, again this is our time it is taking uh, let me see uh, around this much time to go from this distance uh, to go from this distance uh, to this distance and it, it is taking around this much time to go from this distance uh, to this distance so it's taking a lot of time it's, a, it's taking a lot of time to travel this uh, than traveling this so that's why you see that uh, it's faster and then slows down now if you want it to be faster on this side let's see slow around here and then faster around here then i guess you would have if you're just using two keyframes i would have to do something i think something like but uh, this one uh, this may cause it to bounce back it's just going to cause it to bounce back yeah because we are going from a higher value uh, indicated by this and then coming back to a lower value uh, I'm making this story because I rarely see people talk about this kind of animation or detailed uh, animation here and I think uh, some of you might be missing out on uh, understanding how this uh, kind of animation works or the graph editor works uh, but uh, so you can see that is making it bounce back so if you go beyond uh, your keyframe you're just going to reverse the animation a bit so if say 
I can see that uh, our keyframe starts here. If I reverse, if I just drag this so that uh, this line is a, is below our keyframe, I'm just going to bounce it back, create a start off with a bounce back and then, yeah, so those are some of, some tricks you could learn can exaggerate it by just pushing this, making uh, this kind of uh, inverted S. I make it like a pendulum bob uh, swinging back and forth like that. And uh, you can also, let me first clear this out. Yes. You can also, uh, there are a few templates uh, that blender, that comes with Blender. So if you select the curve, uh, any curve you want, you can go under key and then I think it's under interpolation. You have a few uh, uh, templates you can use here. You have back, which will basically create that bounce we have created. And uh, we also have bounce which will give you that bounce effect. You also have the, the, the elastic. Yeah, so these are just templates uh, that you can apply in your workflow if you wanted to. And again, they're not just limited to uh, this here. Say you wanted to animate a bouncing ball Let's add a UV sphere. We can add a keyframe there and then add another keyframe there. And you can see by doing that, we have added quite a few keyframes. If we play back, let me just make sure this is okay. If we play back, you see we are getting that. But so we also wanted to jump from, uh, to start from up here, down, and then bounce. So to do that, we just have to isolate uh, the Z axis. So Z location, shift H. You can see it's a straight line, meaning that uh, it hasn't changed. Uh, the position is not changing, uh, but uh, if I grab this and move it up, you can see I can give it an upward. Again, you can select everything using A and Alt A to deselect all the curves and they use the period key to zoom in. So you can see it's doing that. Let's try using the bounce interpolation to see how that would work. Nice. That is a quick way to add a bounce to your ball, balls. Mm. Yeah. Quite easy in a very, very few steps are uh, achieving very, very realistic results. But uh, say, you can see is say you had a flow, just, let's say this is uh, this plane here, I mean, just give it some thickness. This plane here uh, indicated your flow and, uh, but uh, right now you can see that uh, the ball is actually is not bouncing on the flow, it's bouncing through the flow. I want it to just touch the flow. So what you can do here is uh, just select the ball and uh, select your Z, Z location. Uh, as you know that uh, this controls the Z positioning of the ball. And uh, just make sure you have all the points selected. You can also box select using a left drag. And uh, just grab, hit G and then Y to move this on the Z axis until it touches. And uh, to be safe, I uh, just make sure that uh, you are at the last frame and uh, you have everything selected and move it until that the bottom touches. You can also go to wireframe just to make sure that everything aligns correctly as you want it to. You can also, as you move, if you hit G and Y and move, you can hold on shift to, to slow down uh, how much the move is. Can even zoom in further and 
just to make sure that everything is perfect. Now, if we play back, it should bounce on the surface, as you can see. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll be doing uh, tutorials like this, just looking at something, one topic here, and just yeah, diving in into it. And uh, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.